Order members, the assembly is resumed. William Humphreys gives notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister for Agriculture, Environment and Rural, Develop Rural Affairs. And I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their places. The member who asked the question will be called automatically to ask the supplementary. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs, given the health and safety issues arising from the waste storage at Eaton Dairy Industrial Estate, what action his department and the Northern Ireland Environment Agency is taking to ensure that the offending material is removed urgently? I call Minister Putz. Deputy Speaker, my department is active, actively engaged with both the site operator and representatives of the landowners and directed that the waste materials deposited at the site are removed as a matter of urgency. Subsequently, the landowner has engaged a legitimate waste management company and works to remove waste from the Eden Dairy site have commenced today. My department are present at the site and will continue to monitor progress on a daily basis. A full and thorough investigation is underway, and my department will ensure that those responsible for this activity are vigorously pursued and face the maximum criminal sanction. I call William Humphrey to ask supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I thank the House for allowing this question to be asked today. Minister, the communities in Woodville and Midshankle have been plagued with rats, infested with flies, and having to endure dreadful smells over the last number of weeks. In my opinion, Belfast City Council and Northern Ireland Environment Agency were far too slow to react. Assurances were given that clearance would start before the 12th holidays, and yet on Saturday attempts were made to dump yet more material in that area. Can I ask the Minister, um, will his investigation be robust and provide reassurance to the people living in that area? Well, I thank the member for the question, and I thank the member for alerting me to the situation on, on Saturday afternoon. And, uh, I can assure the member that there will be a robust response to this. Uh, what has happened is unacceptable, so it's not a registered site. Consequently, it's an illegal site, and therefore uh, the enforcement branch of NIEA will be tasked with um, carrying out all of the investigations and bringing forward um, a recommendation um, to the PPS uh, to, 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 to take this matter. Uh, to court uh, on the basis of the information that they find. So it is a matter for the NIA enforcement branch, but I can assure the member that it will be robustly investigated, and if the appropriate information comes forward, then that will be taken forward. I call Paul Bradley. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer, and also want to praise my colleague William Humphrey and also Councillor Kingston and Councillor Vernon on the work that they have done and acted proactively in a timely manner with this. Um, just to ask the Minister then, following on from your answer there to my colleague Mr Humphrey, um, do we need to look at uh, stricter laws and higher fines when it comes to illegal dumping throughout the whole of Northern Ireland, which has been extremely prevalent um, during the period over COVID-19? Well, the fines are a matter for the courts. And, uh, the fines can be high if the courts actually in, uh, decide to make them high. And, uh, we encourage the courts to, to actually fine heavily and uh, uh, have a, a principle of the polluter pays. And consequently, NIEA will always seek to get back all of the expenditure that they had involved in a case. Um, so it isn't publicly expenditure for someone's criminal activity. <coughs> it is for the courts to actually identify the fine over and, and beyond that. And we will encourage them to, to find individuals who engage in illegal activity uh, quite heavily. In terms of uh, what, what, what has happened, um, there is a series of people who engage in waste activity uh, which are registered and carry out those activities legally. There are others who would appear to be doing it um, who are not registered and consequently are doing it illegally. And I am happy to look again um, at the, the, the work that has been done in developing the regulation, developing the legislation around us, and see if it needs refreshed um, or whether there is inadequacies. Um, I don't believe that this will be a one off case. Um, I believe there will be other cases. And therefore, if we need to, then we will have to take further steps to ensure 
that we can clamp down heavily on this type of activity. I call Philip McGuigan. Uh, and can I co concur with the Minister and the previous speakers about the absolute disgrace uh, at the, the waste, uh, illegal waste dumped on this site? Uh, can I ask the Minister what engagement he has had with the local authorities and local businesses and residents uh, to urgently redress the vermin problem associated with the illegal waste? Well, the vermin problem is a problem for Belfast City Council. And uh, Belfast City Council, as I understand, um, are putting a, a, a full uh, baiting down uh, for the vermin problem. Uh, I, I should say that the people who were resisting opening household waste recycling centres, a lot of this waste is waste that would normally have ended up in that source. And that is why I pressed quite some time ago for household waste recycling centres to open, because it was evident that waste was being collected in people's backyards and people's gardens, which was causing problems, and some people have turned to an illegal sector who have financially gained from that. And I believe that there are still household waste recycling centres in various councils still not opened. And I'd have to say to those councils where that is the case, would you please get your act together, get those recycling centres open and provide the service that you're being paid to provide? I call Matthew Toll. Uh, thanks, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and um, thank you to those who tabled the question today. Clearly, as people have said, it's completely unacceptable that residents in that part of North Belfast have had to put up with this appalling spectacle and the, these, um, the, the, this illegal dumping. The Minister just said in his previous answer that um, uh, he suspected that, these were, that this was illegal dumping by people who had paid to dump that stuff there. Is he aware of this happening on a more widespread basis across Northern Ireland? Has he got report, have there been reports into his department of this happening in a systematic way? Because if he already seems to have an indication that, that this has been you know, paid for by a specific organisation, is he aware of it on a more widespread basis? No, evidence would be anecdotal as opposed to empirical So at, at, at this stage. Um, but there is a bit of the white van man scenario who has been down, around doing a bit of tidying up around people's homes and, and could you get rid of that for us? And there has been bits and pieces of that has been involved with fly tipping um, and we are aware of that. And uh, there may be some people who have um, set themselves up to, to, to handle waste whenever they are not registered waste handlers um, and, and that may be go going on. Uh, but we need to be very cautious in all of this. Um, identify exactly what the situation is in this and any other case that is brought forward and go follow due process because due process is what will actually bring in the results by taking these people to court and having them appropriately uh, fined and the costs um, are charged to them uh, for the disposal of any materials. I call John Blair. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for the um, answer so far, and also Mr. Humphrey, the original question. Um, given that we know, Deputy Speaker, that the, one of the sites is on the, the same piece of ground as a block of private apartments and immediately abutting other properties as well, can I ask that uh, if it's become clear if costs incurred by residents thus far can be refunded to them through action taken against the um, illegal operator? I'm not sure if that's the case. Um, or whether that can be the case. It's certainly something that we're happy to look at. Um, our focus, um, and our primary focus, from I became aware of this on Saturday afternoon and I worked with NIEA over the weekend and Monday morning, um, was that we have got this material removed and removed pronto. Um, so uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, we got the agreement of the owners of the Eden Dairy site to, to pick up the bill for, for removing this. Um, that was signed off later, later, later in the evening, and the operators are now in uh, clearing it as we speak. Um, so that, that was um, our initial uh, target. Um, so we can look at that issue that's been raised by Mr. Blair. Colin Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, given our, set our track record of illegal dumping in Northern Ireland, not to mention Maboy, and now this one ongoing in Belfast City Centre, will the Minister um, commit to strengthen laws for illegal dumping and practices across the region? I am certainly very happy to, to look, at, look at how we can strengthen laws and uh, ensure that we can have the appropriate responses. Um, 
we, we still have waste to be repatriated to the Republic of Ireland, for example, that was dumped here. So whenever I was previously Minister, there was 20 sites, which we got an agreement from the then Republic of Ireland Minister that those would be removed. I was somewhat surprised when I came back into office and discovered that only nine or ten of them, I think, have been repatriated. So that's a matter that I will raise with the, the new minister, now that I've eventually got a minister to, to deal with uh, in the Republic of Ireland, because there was an absence of that for a period of time, and that we had a government that was carrying on, but clearly um, wasn't going to be the government. Um, so I will raise that with my ministerial colleague in terms of having that repatriation um, completed. But certainly, issues around waste, there is money to be made at waste. And there are individuals um, who will engage in the waste business inappropriately uh, because of that. And there are a lot of good operators out there, and they want to see the laws strengthened um, because uh, they're doing the job right. And you know, on a regular basis, they're having NIEA calling with them to check that they're doing the thing right. And then these other people pop up and doing things entirely illegally. And we need to ensure that we can clamp down on them quickly and effectively and efficiently. I call Andrew Muir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I thank the, the member for his question and for the minister for his responses. Um, I think most members have very, been very concerned to hear about yet another illegal dump in Northern Ireland and the environmental consequences arising from that. I have concerns around whether the lessons have been learnt from the Moboy dump and whether the Mills report recommendations have been fully implemented. I don't feel they have. I would be interested to understand from the Minister whether his view is whether the lessons have been learnt and the recommendations implemented. It would appear in this particular instance that the material that was first gathered was um, you know, cardboard and uh, mattresses and pallets and things like that there, uh, but then developed into other materials um, which have been more associated, more associated with landfill. And uh, that's, that has got out of control very quickly because once that material is, is dumped inappropriately, um, particularly with mattresses and so forth, the rats, the flies and so forth, will uh, very quickly um, become uh, take up residence and cause all sorts of problems. So we do need to be on the ball in terms of illegal activity. And you know, I will be, be, be looking at this further on the back of, 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 of what has happened, uh, because ultimately it is absolutely essential <coughs> that waste is dealt with appropriately. We in Northern Ireland have reached our 50% target for recycling. We're going to push that up further. And it is absolutely critically important that we ensure that in everything that we do, that we manage what, what we create, the problem that we create, we manage it appropriately. And consequently, we can't have a circumstance um, where we'll have this fly tipping, illegal dumping, uh, and all of that taking place. And the result of that is damage to the environment and uh, damage to other people's lives. Um, as a result of it. I, I, I can say that we are considerably better than we used to be, considerably better. Um, but is there still gaps? Um, I believe that there is. How best we fill those gaps is, is, is needs to be addressed. Are there any further questions? I call William Humphrey. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answers. Minister, some folk have had to leave their homes People are now complaining of being ill. This has caused major uh, anxiety and stress in the local community, all in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I want to thank the Minister for his intervention. Can the Minister assure me, uh, and more importantly assure this House and my constituents, that this nightmare that they've had to endure over the last number of weeks will be ended this week? Work has started today and we welcome that, but will it be ended this week and this matter put to bed? I believe that, and I've been given assurances that the material will be removed by the end of the week. All of the, mater all of the, the material that's attracting the rats and the flies. So, um, some of the material, which which isn't um, that type, um, may may be a bit longer to be removed. Uh, but all of that residual waste um, will be removed by the end of this week. In fact, I would hope be removed a lot quicker. Um, I know that the companies that have been brought in are very professional, 
and <coughs> are, 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 are good at handling this sort of thing. So I believe that they will respond very quickly uh, now to the problem that exists there. And hopefully it will be done well before the end of the week. And that concludes that item of business, item five in the order paper of the adjournment. But before I put the question, I would remind members that the next sitting of the Assembly is currently scheduled for Tuesday the 28th of July. However, if it becomes apparent that an additional sitting may be required on Monday the 27th of July,